Hello, today we're going to look at another magazine direct from the 1970s. Which one are we going to look at today? Well, it is a practical electronics, I can tell you. And there is another thing I can tell you, it was 45p. Anyway, today we're going to look at January 1978. Where were you in 1978, January? What, what, what was going on? Anyway, the reason why we're looking at this magazine in particular is, well, it's, it's right in front of you. It's the rhythm generator. And yes, this is going to be pretty damn interesting. So as I said last time, there wasn't any content up to January 1973. Obviously, this is January 1978, so we've got a good few years behind us of contents, and it's jumped a fair few years, so the technology has moved a lot on, and I've just noticed something down here. Oh, wow. You could buy a kit of the rhythm generator that is on the front so it looks like it's got the full kit build this practical electronics january 1978 easy build uh low cost rhythm generator it looks looks a bit different oh no it's just a different enclosure if you look this is enclosure it's got like a tolex top or something this one's just got a metal top but yeah you could have got that whole kit for £49.95, including VAT. Low rise on the live stream just mentioned that this is in today's value, £252.39. So yeah, that is, it's, I, I guess that's all right for a drum machine kit. Uh, 1978 obviously was when the CR78 came out, which was arguably the first uh, programmable drum machine. Uh, you had the uh, patterns that you could add on top of each other, like in most usual ones, as well as this, it's a pattern one, but they also had extra little buttons where you could program in your own uh, drum patterns and stuff. And this was uh, before the 808, and stuff like that so the CR78 was in 1978 but it might have been a few months after this they came out so obviously a DIY version is probably not as good as the you know up-to-date technology anyway we'll have a look at through and see what we've got first we've got the Amatic this is a nice frequency ca counter we've got Nixie tubes in it it looks really nice and uh, a little bit of a spoiler because remember this is 1978 so this is around when uh, home computers were started to you know kick off like the Commodore pet the Apple II, things like that uh, there's no sign of it in here however when you skip along another year or two it's full absolutely full of computers we'll have a look at some point but it's really interesting the flip the absolute flip of a switch a really really interesting looking synthesizer up here uh, at least i think it's a synthesizer phonosonics mini sonic mark ii and there's i'm going to do a video on the mini sonic low pass filter in the next uh, couple of weeks a bit of a spoiler alert anyway after only a handful of advertisement uh, pages we get straight into the nitty gritty the meat of it and we get over to the rhythm generator and just before we go to the rhythm generator i have just noticed on this page Brand new kits, here we go. It's the same new rhythm generator, redesigned, improved and extended version of the Practical Electronics 9074 design. I'm gonna have to find that as well. Oh, that's interesting. There's an even older design of this one. So I'm just gonna, 1974. This rhythm generator design compacts eight percussion instruments and a percussionist into a neat professionally styled case, measuring some 300 by 130 by 60 centimeters. So it's only a small little, it's only a small little one. The advantage of this unit over many others is that rhythms are selected directly and can be superimposed to create new and musically more interesting patterns. There are 12 basic rhythms the, and these are as follows, tango, waltz, shuffle, march, slow rock, blah, 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 boss and over, of course. By simply selecting two or more, their patterns will be superimposed and a blend of the selected rhythms will result. This is interesting because it's a very similar uh, premise to the CR78 and the CR68. So this chip uses an M253AA. A. Uh, Frederick, a patron, um, sent me some information on this chip. And what this chip is, is it's basically a preset chip that you send in. Well, I'll show you the, uh, I'll show you the image of the breakdown of the, uh, the sequencer section. So this is the uh, sequencer section of the drum machine and this is the m25aa the uh, the rhythm generator little microprocessor basically and um on this side there's just basically a bunch of switches and these switches uh just go into this side that selects the preset rhythms as it says you can superimpose these patterns on top of each other so if you select number 12 and number 16 they will play at the same time so it will just add both on top of each other and they'll end up playing uh, all of these drum machines drums at the end 
there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven drums outputs. However, there is, it says that there are eight drum sounds on this. That's because the fifth pin, this drum machine right here, which is the snare, actually goes all the way over here and then comes to another pole on the selection switch. And how this works is quite funny, as you see this line here, there's a bus between all of these switches that basically sends this one, uh, this, uh, this uh, pin, over to the snare drum. So if you're selecting any of these switches, it will play the snare drum. But if you're selecting any of these switches, but the lower ones, the rumba, the beguini, cha-cha, samba and bossa nova, well the snare drum gets swapped with a clave. Uh, I found out that's how you're supposed to pronounce it, not clav, like I've been pronouncing it my whole life. So I, I wonder what happens if you select superimpose, let's say, the march, over the top of the cha-cha-cha. Does that mean the snare and the clave play on top of each other? That is the question. To be honest, it's the bit that doesn't particularly interest me personally because the, the, the big letdown to most preset drum machines is the fact that the drum machine patterns are preset. It's not my thing. However, I may try and track down one of these. The bit that interests me in this rhythm generator is the simplicity of the drum voices. They're, all of these rhythm generators are usually very simple and they have pretty much all the time the same drums. You will notice that uh, little uh, portable organs of the time, Casio tone keyboards even later on, all of the preset drum machines, all of the organs, why all of the drums sound the same. It's because they are basically the same drum machines. Maybe they have a different pattern, maybe they're laid out in a different box, but fundamentally they are very similar. And they are basically split off into two sections of drum sounds. There's the noisy sounds and the toned sounds. The toned sounds are the ones like the, bo the bongos and the toms and the bass drum, you know, the ones that's, that's like, sounds like a, a bit of a, a, a wave, it's like boom. Boom. And then there's the sounds like the snares and the hi-hats and stuff. They're the noisy sounds. They're like shh, tss, shh, tss, tss. They're both fundamentally uh, different sounds. The snare, okay, the snare is a mixture of both of them. So this is where we get into the meat of the machine. So this figure, uh, figure four, figure four is the sinusoidal oscillator. This is the 20. This is the, this is the circuit for the dum, 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 dum. Percussion voice, the bass drum, high bongos, low bongos, and clave, clav, claves, you know, <laughs> are created by the use of damped sinusoidal oscillators. The long and short cymbals and maracas are simulated by the use of damped filtered white noise, like mentioned. An example of the simple 20 oscillator used is shown in figure four. The NAND gate is held just below the continuous oscillation by the use of VRA. All four oscillators in this group are identical with the exception of the values of the timing capacity capacitors which set the frequency of the oscillation. The figure seven which is the whole circuit of this because you'll notice that there are actually four circuits and this is actually governed by the fact that it's using a 4011 chip which is basically a quad NAND gate so I guess that's why they chose four voices because they've got four NAND gates in these packages. The values of the capacitors are choosed to suit the instrument being simulated. VRA regulates the decay of the oscillation and should be adjusted to give the most realistic effect. The pulsing output of the M253AA is a square wave and this is differentiated by C3A and R1A into two opposite spikes. Basically the M253 uh, sequencer sends out quite a big old chunky square wave. It's got to be turned into a trigger voltage and this is where this comes in. Uh, so this is where the pulse input goes in. It looks like this and this whole circuit brings it into a nice and neat uh, trigger pulse that will be able to be trigger this uh, if because if this was triggered by this it would actually go doo -doo. it would go something like that so this will make it a bit more like doo -doo. which are attenuated by r2a and rectified to a single positive spike by d1a it's basically actually the cgs gate to trigger converter it's it's a very similar circuit so i'm going to quickly put together a single one of these drum voices because this has four drum voices in all together and this is the single drum voice the trigger is there 
and the output is down here. So uh, I'm gonna build this whole thing, and yeah, I'll see you in a second. Okay, so the top aspect of this is now working. I accidentally had this capacitor wired up to the plus five volt supply, instead of the two inputs of the NANDs gates, which is the 12 and 13, which is, but you see this little green wire there? That is them being shorted together. Um, so now it actually acts like a 20 oscillator. If I twist this potentiometer, it will get very, it will actually become just a full 100 percent oscillation tone oh it's really nasty in my ear and you may recognize this effect if you've ever taken apart an organ or a rubbish drum machine from this time uh, and they've got these doop, 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 these kind of sounds they're all a very similar design they're twin t designs and uh you basically you bring it just below the the point at where the oscillator feeds back and this is the most resonant sound for that note and this wire right here is the trigger wire if i send this over to five volts you'll hear there's a slight dick, dick, dick. there's a lot of frazzles what we need to do now is build this input conditioning circuit because if you remember looking back on this page right here it actually shows you what this input conditioning actually does let's say we send in a pulse input this would have initially been from this circuit over here which was a sequencer circuit we send it into here which is in essence a gate to trigger converter uh, first it turns it into a symmetric kind of pulse and then the diode actually takes this bottom one out so it ends up just being the front of it so it's like a dunk a really quick dump. So I've gone ahead and built the gate to trigger converter that is in the schematic. What we need to do now is send a little voltage into the uh, beginning of this and we should get our clave. I should use a wire that's actually any good. Ugh. <laughs> Yay! Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? It's a clave! Clave! Clave. You can adjust the decay of the clave with this, however you can't really get that much expression with it because it ends up self oscillating when it's a little bit too high. Like that, oh it sounds awful. So you can make it really tight, really tight clave. Oh. I've now adjusted the capacitors to be in line with the bass drum on the 20 circuit in this magazine, which means that you have to go for larger capacitors. The capacitors uh, govern the pitches and the decay length. Uh, so this uh, capacitor right here governs the pitch. The two resistors going to it actually help the pitch as well. Like you can actually get slight adjustments on the pitch. But at the same time, the, the decay is very intertwined with the pitch control. These two capacitors right here help to govern the decay a little bit more to get a little bit more bang for your buck. And you also have to adjust this capacitor right here, which is on the gate to trigger circuit. This is a larger capacitor on the kick drum and that means that the actual trigger pulse is a little bit bigger to make it a bit more, bit more boomy. So you heard the kick drum, you heard the clave, so I'm going to put these together now and just see what we can get out of it. Fast forward a few days and I've designed this layout, which is basically all four 20 drums. It's got a five volt input uh, ground. Each of the 20 drums has a knob. Uh, these uh, kind of do the decay, but they also adjust the uh, pitch a little bit because like I said earlier, uh, the pitch and the decay is sort of, it's it, they're, they're interlocked and intertwined within the 20 drums. And, and here is my rather sketchy looking strip board version of this. This is exactly the same as the layout except for uh, the 100k resistors that are going from the output pins of the 4011 to the drum outputs. They're actually all connecting together down to this point and this is sort of a mix bus so this is basically just all of the drum outputs just wired together down here but apart from that this is exactly the same. You'll see all of it's been cut except for a ground plane there and a ground plane there which are both connected on either side. And yeah, there's a little bit left at the bottom which I'm going to be able to drill mounting holes and I haven't plugged it in yet so I think the next thing we need to do is uh, 
see if it makes any sound, I guess. There is one thing I forgot to mention. I didn't have any 33 nanofarad capacitors. In fact, uh, some of these capacitors are nearly around the same values. The values are correct on the strip ball layout, but if you don't have them, just go for the closest ones you can get because these uh, basically just govern the pitch and the decay. But the problem is the closest I had to these capacitor values were 47 nanofarads, and I figured I may as well not make two of exactly the same drums. So I'm just waiting for these capacitors to turn up. But as you can hear, the, uh, oof. So these wires coming off are just the five volt triggers and these just need to listen to five volts to actually trigger. You probably don't hear this. Ooh. Yeah! So I'm gonna try and wire these up to a BeatStep Pro and then we'll just sequence this up and just see what it sounds like, I guess. Uh, you can hear, if I, if I get these decays down, uh, these uh, knobs do a little bit of adjustments to uh, be able to get the resonance. You sort of fine tune the, uh, the point just before it starts feeding back on itself and then these are like fine tuned, but they do sound like uh, twin T drums, like. It's all a little bit shaky right now because it's alligator clips. And if I knock the table, there's some shaky sounds and stuff like that. So that is the four sinusoidal oscillators, the twin T drums of uh, January 1978, Practical Electronics. Like I said, next week, we're gonna be looking at this circuit, which is the noise element of the drums. It's got the maracas, the short cymbal, the long cymbal, and as well as the snare drum. But the snare drum is funnily enough a combination. You see there's a diode going here. This is actually going to one of the bongos. So the snare drum is a mixture of a bongo and a noise circuit. Uh, so if you think about it, it's sort of a snare drum is sort of a bongo drum, but not really a bongo drum. It's just a drum with a snare, a noise element to it. So, uh, you know, this is reflected in the electronics. And we're we gonna look at this next week. However, I'm actually gonna start filming it tonight live on Patreon. So if you wanna see the live stream, like I did last week, I did a live stream of filming this. This is last week, uh, head, head fudge, I know. Well, I'm doing that in a moment uh, over on Patreon. The exact time is on Patreon right now. So if you wanna watch this, the unedited version of this video, well, check this out because I'll be breadboarding this in a little bit and needless to say Patreon support helps towards the museum opening which is actually looking like it's finally going to be opening at, in some point because the lockdown is being lifted over here. So yeah I hope this was of interest. This project is going to span over a couple more weeks. It's going to be building this and it's going to be building a trigger sequencer I guess and stuff like that. Anyway I've been Sam. If you like this subscribe and yeah have a lovely have a lovely time.